Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Margarita and today I'm here to talk to you about the five books that surprised me the most in 2018. So all of these books surprised me for various different reasons, which I will get into when I talk to you about each individual book. They're in no particular order. They're just whatever I happen to pick up that's in front of me. And let's just get into the books because that's why you're really here. The first book that I'm going to talk about <clears throat> is Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant. So I knew that I was going to like this book for two reasons. First of all, Mira Grant, also known as Shauna McGuire. I love her Wayward Children series, so I knew that I was going to like this. Second of all, Killer Mermaids. What is not to love? Those two things just... <sighs> yes, yes please. I love the idea of mermaids that kill men like I don't know what it is about it instead of the sweet little mermaid I want a siren who's gonna rip your face off and this book definitely delivered so like I said it's about mermaid the killer mermaids and it's written by Mira Grant I knew that I was going to like it but what really surprised me about this book is all of the sciencey parts of it which I was not expecting whatsoever so this book um basically these scientists go out um, with the funding of a TV, um, not channel, but like a TV company, that's the word, to find proof of mermaids. And the first expedition, everybody dies. So they send out another expedition to find out what happened to that original ship. And lo and behold, it's killer mermaids. So... <laughs> But this is really science-based, so there are all these scientists on these expeditions that go out for, like, there's climate change plays a big role in this, and it it's just all these different little science-y facts just fed into my heart because I'm a science nerd myself, and I could just really, really appreciate the time that went into trying to make this as logical as possible and make it sound like this is really something that could happen in our world, not some, like fantasy world or whatever this makes sense in our world as it is today and I just thought so cool I really really loved it I that sciencey part just really pushed this over the edge for me highly recommend check it out if you're into killer mermaids or mermaids or Mira Grant Sean and Maguire I mean what's not to love about her writing the next book that I'm going to talk about is The Female of the Species by Mindy McGinnis and I had heard a lot of people talk about this and really, really enjoy it. I was not sure how I was going to feel about it. God, this cover is so yellow. <laughs> um, I was not sure how I was going to feel about it, but I definitely wanted to give it a shot. And I loved it so much more than I thought that I would. It basically follows three characters. There's Alex, Jack, and PK. And Alex is our central character. Her sister was murdered, was brutally murdered, and also, I believe, raped by some person in the community. Everybody knew who he was, but he was, for some reason, found not guilty. So Alex has that stigma of her sister was murdered. And she's already kind of weird, and then she has that stigma around her. Jack um, ends up falling in love with her and PK ends up befriending her through various different circumstances and it's how these two people see Alex how she sees herself and I just loved Alex so much she is who I wish I could be like when certain things happen I wish that I had her reaction because my reaction is always to freeze and if I just I connect with her so much I loved her so much I wanted to be like her I thought she was absolutely fabulous there's definitely, you know, trigger warnings for rape, for sexual assault, for violence. I mean, this book is can be very violent. There's um, animal abuse, which broke my heart. So this book deals with a lot of really tough topics, but I absolutely loved it. I thought it was amazing. I had no idea I would love it as much as I did. But I really think that Alex makes this book for me. Like, she is the reason that I loved it as much as I did. If she had been written any differently, I probably would not have enjoyed this as much as I did. The next book that I'm going to talk about is The School of Good and Evil by Soman Chanini. This is a middle grade book and I picked it up thinking, yeah, this is going to be a nice fluffy read, 
to get through really fast, I'll enjoy it, and then move on. I have the whole series. This book blew my mind. I thought it was so much fun. So it basically follows our two main characters. I believe it's Sophie and Agnes. Let me double check. Agatha. So Sophie, in this world, every year or every couple years, um, two children are stolen. One who will attend the good of the school for good and one who will attend the school for evil. And the dream is that they will have their own fairy tale one day. Like they will be so fabulous that they will have their own fairy tale one day. So Sophie grows up thinking she will go to the school of good. She will be chosen and she will be the best princess in the world. And she thinks that Agatha is going to go to the school of evil because she lives in a cemetery. She's like dark and broody and all this stuff. When they are in fact taken, the, Agatha ends up in the school for good and Sophie ends up in the school for evil. And it's just them trying to, you know, fit into this world that they didn't think that they belonged in and then realizing that they do kind of belong there. And it's just so good. And there's some really dark parts of this book that I was like, this is a middle grade? This is great. I wish that this had been around when I was young. I definitely would have loved this series a lot as a kid. So I'm enjoying it now. I mean, I'm almost, I'm 26 and I'm enjoying it just as much. So really, really enjoyed this book. I cannot wait to continue on with the series, which I'm planning on doing later in 2019. But this totally took me by surprise in the best possible way. The next book that I'm going to talk about is Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough. This is, I guess, a domestic thriller. It follows three characters. can't remember their names right now. Louise, David, and Adele. David and Adele are married, but there's something wrong with their marriage. Um, and Luis ends up having an affair with David. She doesn't know that he's married at the time, but he turns out to be her new boss. It's just all really twisted and complicated. So Luis is kind of stuck between David and Adele because she has these two relationships with each of them. And there's something off about Adele. You don't know what it is, but you also think that David is kind of not a great guy either. And it's that story. The reason that this book surprised me is because that ending I did not see coming. I could not have foreseen that ending coming from a million miles away. So this book just complete. I was like, what? So that is why this is on this list because of that ending. I was so surprised. It just like, you're going straight and then sharp left turn where you almost turn all the way around. That's how surprising I found that ending. But definitely enjoyed this book. And the last book that I'm going to talk about is Lost Boys by Christina Henry. This is a dark Peter Pan retelling and the reason that this is on this list is because I have read her other two dark retellings which are Alice and the Red Queen which is a dark retelling of Alice in Wonderland. And I really enjoyed the premise of those books but I found the endings to be lacking a lot. They were just really anticlimactic, I found. So this book, I was expecting another anticlimactic ending, a great story, but an anticlimactic ending. And I did not get that. This ending was so good. This whole book was so good. The only reason this is not in um, the best books that I read for the year is because I knew that I was making this video and I, this is, it would just surprise me so much. My favorite thing about this book is that how it portrays love and how and what love is not because Peter steals well he doesn't steal but the first boy that he ever brings to Neverland is um his name's Jamie I believe and he spends his whole life telling Jamie I love you you I've done all of this for you because I love you because you are my best friend and as the story goes on Jamie starts to realize what Peter calls love is not really love and I just thought that was so amazing. We need more stuff like that in books because there are so many people that um or so many books that portray love and it's so toxic and it's so disgusting but they call it love and this was the first book that I've ever read that had those same tropes but called it was what it is. This is not love. This is sick. This is toxic. This is not okay. And this book just was so good. I absolutely loved it. And I highly, 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 highly recommend this book. 
I also read another book by her this year, but this one is by far and away a hundred times better. Definitely read it. Please read it. Just read it. <laughs> So those are all of the surprising books that, well, not all of the surprising books that I've read this year. I've read a lot of other surprising books, but those are the top five. Let me know in the comments down below if you have read any of these books, your thoughts and opinions about these books, and the books that surprised you this year. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!